What is up everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here. I hope you guys are doing well. So, you know, last week I I released two videos, so I've been sort of taking a break, you know, taking it easy uh, from Michael's stuff. Uh, but now it's time to get back into the swing of things. And I've got some cool updates to show you guys, namely about the grains. So if you guys remember the last video, I was talking about how, you know, um, the batch of grains that I had that was full of moss, you know, and all the endospores that they bring and all the other crap they bring, you know, all their dung and uh, all the bacteria and even the dead ones that have, you know, nasty byproducts that you definitely don't want to have in your mycelium. Like if you, if you steer it, like, you know, some people are saying that, oh, you know, grains, once you sterilize it, it's completely clean. Well, yeah, once you sterilize it uh, to a certain extent, for example, you don't want grains that have like a bunch of stuff that you don't want in there, even if it's dead. You still don't want it because some of them could be toxic to the mycelium. Um, for example, like you, you wouldn't say like you could sterilize your poo, right? Uh, and then say, okay, it's completely fine for human consumption. Well, not really. It's still poo. You don't want to be eating that. And it's the same thing goes. Uh, certain grains are just so nasty that you don't want to feed it to anything, including your mycelium. And also moss just produce endospores. So certain batches of grains, right? will have higher amounts of endospores, depending on, of course, uh, how clean they were, how well they were stored. Are they made for human consumption? Are they made for seed grade? Are they feed grade? Feed grade is what we usually use in this hobby and it's the dirtiest. Uh, well, I'm sure there's dirtier, but like at least commercially that you can buy and that most people are buying, it's feed grade, right? And even within feed grade, there's different rankings. Like for example, if you're using oats, you wanna go for triple washed oats, right? Oats are particularly notorious for contaminating to bacteria even after doing a pressure cooker run. Now you could increase the amount of time that you pressure cook it, but I think after a certain point, it's just better and less risky to just get a new batch of grains and start over. Um, and that's sort of what I've done. Right, um, so I went from the bag of rye that was just full of moss. It was literally a cesspit and their breeding ground, it was disgusting. Uh, my house was just full of moss, guys. It's really bad. And to brown rice, which is for human consumption. This is from the feed store, this is for human consumption. Now, the, this was fine, right? This was fine for the, for the first few months that I had the bag, right? But later on, as the infestation grew and grew, it just went to the point where it became 100% contamination, no matter the culture or anything. Nothing else changed, just the grains deteriorated. Um, and, you know, even if I don't inoculate it for like two weeks, it will start looking wet, rotty. And I was going, I was upping my sterilization time too, to three to four hours, right? Uh, but it was just still causing problems and I was sick of wasting my good cultures on them. So uh, I started anew with the brown rice and they're doing fantastic. And, you know, like certain grains do have, like naturally have higher endospore counts just innately. For example, popcorn is notorious for that. Uh, but, you know, different factors will influence how much endospores you have and all the other nasty stuff that you don't want. Uh, Cause it's not only endospores, it's just the endospores are generally like the hardest to sterilized to kill essentially you shouldn't look so much at the grains itself but like how the grains have been processed how the grains have been prepared uh, and it depends on batch to batch as well especially when you're dealing with feed grade grains right not for human consumption where it's much more consistent um, for example oftentimes a lot of issues seem to stem from organic grains uh, because um, instead of using pesticides oftentimes instead what they'll do is they will spray endospores uh, instead, you know, so oftentimes a lot of issues seem to come from organic grains as well. Um, now, so in the, in the case of my grains, though, it was because of like just, you know, long term storage, it got a moth infestation and it got dirty, right? But at the same time, you know, you can't say that, oh, it's because of its, its rye or anything like that, uh, or use use popcorn, it'll be fine. It's that's irrelevant. What matters is just the batch itself. Um, for example, I started this channel, as some of you know, because I had a two-year-old jar of rye grains that I didn't inoculate and I found it and I was like, you know what, this will make an interesting little experiment. Let's make a video series on it. And thus started my channel, right? And that had no problem colonizing. You know, it was just completely beautiful. It was fine. Two years in storage with just micropore tape as the filter stuck in the uh, kitchen cupboard, completely fine, right? He went through all sorts of temperature swings, no problem. But with this particular batch of rye, just the same problems. And in fact, 
when I made those grains, I was sterilizing only like two and a half hours, right? Maybe two hours, two and a half hours. With these guys, I've sterilized way more and they still have tons of issues. So what might you ask was the difference? Well, for one, there wasn't a moth infestation in the two-year-old grains. Also, the rye that I used for that was also made for human consumption, not feed. So anyways, guys, that's enough uh, of an introduction, I suppose. Uh, so let's get to this video. So some cool things to talk about. So I brought these guys here as sort of a sample of the bad grains. The last remnant, I still have like three, three more jars of these guys. It's redundant to show anymore. It's pretty much the same thing all through. So, you know, completely contaminated. Now to the untrained eye, right, to the beginner, this may look fine. Oh, it's all white. It's nice and thick growth. Isn't that what you want? No. Uh, well, you know, nice and thick grows can certainly be good. And you know what? A lot of healthy cultures is hard to break up as well, right? But these guys are just, you know, really bad. And through experience, you could just tell by the way the mycelium is growing that it just is not healthy at all. Not to mention, you know, this kind of window effect, as I like to call it, where you see the grain and around it, it's just like, it looks like a porthole in a submarine. Talking about submarines, really sad what's happened uh, out in, you know, in the Titanic dive. So hopefully everything's okay there, although chances are probably not, but hopefully it goes well. And this is another batch, right? This is, I brought this one because it's different. It's a different species. It's subtropicalis. And as you can see, we got some kind of stuff going on here. We don't want it. So anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to throw all of these away. I'm not even going to try spawning it. I'm not going to waste the core. I'm not going to waste my time cleaning my shoe boxes. I'm just going to dump them, clean the jars and make some brown rice and start anew because, uh, yeah, I've, I've had that way too much. Uh, recently, it's been hard to salvage a lot of contaminated stuff for some reason, um, especially when the contaminants are, I don't know, it's just, it's just, um, it just hasn't yielded any results, even with top rooting or anything like that recently. So I don't know what's going on there, but, um, yeah, I think it's just a type of contaminant that I'm recently getting is different from what I used to get. So, so over here, this is actually sort of a control jar. This is brown rice, right? And as you can see, it's not too dry, right? It's not too moist. It's just perfect the way I make it. Um, so I want to show you guys something funny. Uh, so here are three jars that I've inoculated. These guys are pool lovers. This one's a Stero. This one's TTBVI. And this one is Florida grass lover. So not a pool lover, Florida grass lover. And so you can, as, as you may notice, there's like different amounts of grain in each, right? This is sagey locks and the three jars, right? <laughs> so, um, it's really, really minimal. So this is actually just one cup of brown rice. This is one and a half cups of brown rice, and this is two cups of brown rice. Now, I didn't put it like this on purpose. It's because when you, um, you know, before when you put it in the pressure cooker, it's not fully hydrated, the, the grains. So they haven't fully absorbed all the moisture, right? So I was like, okay, so let's just get it up to regular, like, you know, micro quart amounts around there. Three quarters or two thirds full, somewhere around there. And then what happened is a day later, it just, you know, expanded like crazy. Uh, so like I tried a couple different runs because it's been a while since I've run brown rice. So I've completely forgotten like what amount of what amount is uh, good per jar. But yeah, for those wondering, one and a half for regular brown rice is fine. Um, this is around what you get. All right. And this is actually also one and a half, but probably a little less. But you know, at the end of the day, I just really don't care. This is plenty of spawn. Um, you know, it's very nutritious as well brown rice. So I'm not worried about that at all. I'm just happy that my clean cultures have clean grains to go to and I just don't have to worry anymore. This, by the way, guys, is eight days of colonization. I want to talk about this as well, why it's so slow, because there's a reason for that. Uh, so this is like eight days of colonization. As you can see, it's fully colonized, essentially. I'm still going to leave it for like two days because there's a couple it, you know, with brown rice, it's so light, the grain, because the holes are remo removed like this, that you know, there's not much contrast to see between the mycelium and the rice, but I could tell this is pretty much almost fully colonized. I'm going to leave it for two days for safe measure just to make sure the job is done. Here's another one. And by the way, these are inoculated, all inoculated with half a agar wedge. Right. And this right here is actually a remnant from the last run. I completely forgot to take it off. Actually, I didn't realize until after I pressure cooked it. But as you can see, it's no problem. It's fine. Um, so, yeah. 
almost fully colonized. I mean, practically it is fully colonized. I'm just going to leave it for two days and everything will be fine. Uh, so over here we have the big, the big one, the Florida grass lovers, right? And as you can see, it seems to not be colonizing much at all, right? And I know these cultures are clean. And as you can see, the place that I was able to shake up, this whole area is like a carpet of thin mycelium. And it's not very vigorous, and there's a reason for that. And it's because there's just too much grains in here. There's not enough oxygen exchange going on. It's going a little bit anaerobic. Uh, I mean, not like literally anaerobic because it's they're still growing, but uh, it's going to get there if I'm not careful. So I have to... I have to think about this a little bit. Oftentimes you, you know, when people used to do PF tech, for those who don't know what PF tech is, right, is BRF cakes, brown rice flour, right? Cakes. It's like you use a half pint jar, right? And you basically don't spawn to bulk. You just make your substrate mix and your spawn. You mix your substrate and your spawn. The substrate being vermiculite and the spawn being brown rice flour. Uh, because it's believed that brown rice does not have endospores, right? Um, at least without the hulls. Uh, so you um, mix it up and you don't have to spawn to bulk. It takes the whole risk of colonizing afterwards, you know, uh, spawning to bulk basically in open air out of the equation. So it's, it was fairly, it was recommended for beginners and it was highly popular for many, many decades. Um, so not many, many decades, maybe, you know, two, three decades. So for PF tech, you want to use like wide mouth stout little jars you don't want to use like you know longer jars uh and you don't want to use like uh you don't want to use like pint jars either because the the grains at the bottom you oftentimes end up stalling and not colonizing because it goes anaerobic there right because there's just not enough oxygen and the same thing is going on here oftentimes the fix for that used to be to flip your jar around like that um, but with the, with these guys, I can actually give it a shake because with PF tech, you actually cannot shake it. So it takes forever to colonize. Um, so, you know, there's a little more leeway here. So yeah, these guys are ready for the first shake today. These guys are ready for the first shake. Uh, the problem is it's kind of hard to disperse the grains because there's so little space as you can see, but yeah, not contam. It's just lack of oxygen going on there. Uh, but yeah, just to recap though, eight days, full colonization, it's great to be back here, you know, just with an agar wedge, clean culture, clean grains means the world. Clean spawn, guys, is the end of the day. Um, so, you know, as a hobbyist, to touch upon liquid, liquid culture, a lot of beginners I find are really interested in liquid culture, but that's really mostly for commercial growers, guys. Uh, if you're a hobbyist, uh, most like 90 plus percent of hobbyists really don't need to be using liquid culture. It's just an extra contamination vector. Um, it's, it's mostly for commercial purposes. So that's why I stay away from liquid culture. I just use pretty much straight up agar. And I know a couple of other people do, uh, who grow a lot as well. So it's not like a necessity basically to do liquid culture. I think people are just attracted to the idea of liquid culture because faster colonization, right? But there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of catches, right? You got to make sure that you do everything correctly. You got to sort of know um, what, what you're doing to get to clean liquid culture and to be able to inoculate jars of that or whatever. Uh, it's it's not as beginner friendly as it seems. Uh, the concept is, is is simple, you know, just, oh, you just, you know, you can, it's as easy as shooting a bunch of spores inside liquid culture mix. It's, you know, that's very risky. Um, but anyways, I digress. <laughs> so uh, on, in other news, um, these guys, so I have two more jars of these pool lovers. One is sterile, one more is sterile, and one more TTBVI. So I'm going to be spawning those guys um, pretty soon. I made a batch of poo yesterday, and I'm going to make some more poo today. And... Um, yeah, so all the fruiting content will be on Patreon. If you guys want to see how I fruit poo lovers. By the way, guys, did you guys know that the word for bread in Japanese is pan? Yeah, and it comes from the Portuguese word pau from when, when the Portuguese settled in Japan for a short bit. So just a little interesting fact, pan, that's how you call it in Japanese. But anyways, back to the video. Uh, back on topic. So if you guys want to see pool lovers fruiting, how I fruit them in shoe boxes, check out my Patreon. There's a seven day free trial available for the microfile tier. You'll get access to a special Discord server, I'm sorry, Discord channel and role. So you can show your support and you could pretty much have a really direct contact to me for your questions and stuff like that. So yeah, that's available. And let's get to the agar stuff, what I'm doing. So if you guys remember the swab video that I made a couple days ago, um, I swabbed a bunch of Mexican grass lover swabs. Well, here is how they are doing. Very clean, very nice, thick, 
fast growth just the way I like it. Look at that. So I'm going to I'm going to take a few transfers just to be safe and then I'm going to spawn this guy as well. And you know, I've also got some bispos. I'm restarting bispos again. And I got some I restreaked some TTBVI. I got some esteros as well, right? This one has some bacteria. Uh, but I got a bunch of different cultures that I'm going to go. I got some PE6, I got some Cambos, etc, etc, etc. So there's a lot of new content coming up and as usual, content will be free on Patreon after a month of releasing. But if you want to watch it immediately, check it out. So yeah, I've also got these Alabama F1s that somebody gave me. Uh, thank you. Thank you. You know who you are. Uh, so I'm going to be spawning this as well and hopefully get some cool, cool finos and got some subtropicalis as well as you can see um so yeah unfortunately i had a, like it was i had a really nice germination plate of that that i spawned and unfortunately it contaminated this is actually one of them right because of the bad grains so it's unfortunate but you know also got some florida grass lovers here that i went back to um spores always good to go back to spores and start and see what you can get uh, honestly, like as I do this longer, I'm just less interested in cloning and stuff. Like I can't remember the last time. Like I, I'll clone a mushroom, but I'll never actually end up growing it out. I'll just keep going back to spore. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's it guys. Um, yeah, unless I get a really cool mutation, which I haven't recently. So I'm just, I'm just not really doing that. So yeah, that's pretty much the video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys have a great day or night. I hope you guys found this video educational. Give it a like comment uh, and subscribe. So thank you guys. Bye-bye.